good evening all of you so this is the week 3 and in this session we will solve the gate previous year questions so let's start with the first question in this question this question came in gate 2013 the question says a settling tank in a wastewater treatment plant is designed for a surface overflow rate of 30 meter cube per day per meter square assume specific gravity of the sediment particle is 2.65 density of water is 1000 kg per meter cube dynamic viscosity of water is uh, 0.001 newton second per meter square and stokes law is valid the approximate minimum size of particle that would be completely removed is so they have given four options so basically when in this question first am i audible yes sir audible okay so basically in this question when they are mentioning the approximate minimum size of particle that would be completely removed so we know that when in terms of settling velocity for so our approach will be for complete so basically for 100% removal for 100% removal of particles overflow rate should be less than or equal to the settling velocity this is we know in question the overflow rate they have mentioned as surface of 30 meter cube per day meter square so basically overflow rate they have mentioned at 30 meter cube per day meter square so we have to convert this into 30 divided by 86400 so that we can get in terms of meter cube per meter square second so the value will come out to be 3.47 into 10 to the power minus 4 meter cube per meter square second okay so now we know the our, our overflow velocity knowing the overflow velocity now we have to calculate the settling velocity so we can write this as like that overflow rate should be equal to the settling velocity so settling velocity formula is g d square diameter of the particle rho s minus rho w divided by 18 mu so the value of overflow velocity which we calculated just now we will keep it later so now the question is asking about the approximate size approximate size of the approximate minimum size of particle for the minimum size of particle basically we have to calculate the diameter so if we rearrange this equation and so basically d will be equal to under root of 18 mu v by g rho s minus rho w okay so if if this equation if this equation if we have to write in terms of g we will get like this okay so now d should be greater than equal to 18 into so dynamic viscosity the value they have given as 0.001 0.001 into overflow velocity we also calculated which is equals to 3.74 into 10 to the power minus 4 entire under the square root now g g we know value is 9.81 into so g value they have given as 2.65 so 2.65 minus 1 if we take rho w outside rho s by rho w will become g so here it will be 1 so rho w here value will be 1000 density of water is 1000 kg per meter cube okay so now after substituting this so d minimum will come out to be d should we come out to be 1.964 into 10 to the power 5 meter okay so we got the d value but there is the catch the question in question the value is given in terms of mm so whenever now we got in terms of meter so we have to convert in terms of mm so if we multiply it with 1000 In 10 to the power 3 mm, so it will be 1.964 into 10 to the power minus 2 mm. 
okay so now we can write it as 0.01964 mm so basically d minimum is equal should be is equivalent to 0.02 mm okay so the answer is b option b so is it clear is it clear yeah. okay so since few students join late i will again repeat the entire question the question basically says a settling tank in wastewater treatment plant is designed for a surface overflow rate of 30 meter cube per day meter square assume specific gravity of sediment particle is equal to 2.65 density of water they have mentioned as 1000 kg per meter cube and the given the value of dynamic viscosity and they are saying stokes law is valid the approximate minimum size of particle that would be completely removed is so basically we know for 100% removal of particle our overflow rate should be less than or equal to settling velocity in the question they have mentioned overflow rate as 30 meter cube per day meter square so we have calculated this in terms of meter cube per meter square second okay so now we know the overflow velocity so this is overflow velocity okay so overflow velocity now you know knowing this then we some uh, using this equation 1 now we were uh, now we'll go back to the equation 1 and we wrote the value of formula of settling velocity then we rearranged it so that we can get the value of diameter after rearranging it we uh, added the value we substituted the values so after substituting we got the value of d in terms of meter but in the option the answers are in the form of mm in millimeter so then to calculate in terms of mm we multiplied with it next over 3 so then we got the value d minimum will be 0.02 mm i hope it is clear so now next question so next question says a, sus a suspension sand like particle in water with particles of diameter 0.1 mm and below is flowing into a settling tank at 0.1 meter cube per second assume g is equal to 9.81 meter per second square specific gravity of particle is 2.65 kinematic viscosity of water is 1.0105 into 10 to minus 2 cm square per second the minimum surface area required for the settling tank to remove particles of size 0.06 mm and above with 100% efficiency so this question get came in get 2014 in set 2 now again they are talking about 100% efficiency so we know for 100% efficiency for 100% efficiency overflow rate should be less than or equal to settling velocity of particle okay so now overflow rate basically we write in terms of q by a should be less than equals to settling velocity now they are talking about minimum surface area so the question is asking the minimum surface area what should be the minimum surface area to get the minimum surface area we can write this as a q by vs so this only i rearranged a i kept it here and vs came to denominator so a should be greater than equal to q by vs now settling velocity formula is gamma s minus gamma w d square by 18 mu so you can write this equation also as gs minus 1 Rho W d square by 18 mu. You can so G S minus one. So in question they are given kinematic viscosity. If you look at they have mentioned kinematic viscosity. To for kinematic viscosity it will be now. So this will be now kinematic viscosity. So V S is equal to G S minus one d square. 
g d square basically it will be so here it there will be g it will come so d square by g okay so now we got the setting velocity so once we substitute the values v s is equals to 2.65 minus 1 into 9.81 small gravity and 0 0.06 into 10 show minus 3 whole square so we substitute the value of d which is given in the portion as 0 0.1 uh, so the d particle size will be this one 0 0.06 mm okay so since it is given in mm we convert it in terms of meter so that's why i wrote 0 0.06 into 10 to minus 3 whole square divided by 18 into kinematic viscosity value they have given as 1.0105 into 10 to minus 2 centimeter square so i will write convert it in terms of meter square so into 1.0105 into 10 to the power minus 6 meters square per second and this is meters per second okay so now after calculating the vs value will come out to be 3.2036 into 10 to the minus 3 meter per second this we got a settling velocity but we have to calculate the minimum surface area for minimum surface area we have to use this equation okay so a is greater than or equal to q upon vs now if you add the value of q and vs a less than or equal to value of q value of q in question is given as 0 0.1 meter cube per second okay so 0 0.1 meter cube per second divided by 3.2036 into 10 to minus 3 so now after calculating the a will come out to be 31.214 meter square okay so is it clear is it clear yes sir okay so basically in this question what we have done we just uh, using the previous concept that is for 100 percent efficiency overflow rate shall be less than or equal to settling velocity of particle so now we have this equation so basically in this we have calculated the value of vs then in it is given q q value is given vs we have calculated and then we have calculated the area okay so vs we calculated with the general stokes law equation using that vs once we calculated the vs 3.203 in tension minus 3 we substituted in this equation this one and from that we got the value of area a minimum was 31.214 meter square okay so we will proceed with the next question so next question says a surface water treatment plant operates round the clock with a flow rate of 35 meter cube per minute so it will be basically meter cube per minute the water temperature is 15 degree celsius and a jar testing indicated an alum dosage of 25 milligram per liter with a flocculation at gt value of 4 into 10 to the power 4 producing optimum results the alum quantity required for 30 days of operation of the plant is okay so in this question basically first we will write the given data the q value they have given as 35 meter cube per minute the water temperature is 15 degree celsius alum dosage is 25 milligram per liter with the flocculation at a gt value of <coughs> 4 into 10 for producing of the alum quantity required for 30 days of 30 days in kg operation of the plant is okay so in this question so basically what we do alum quantity required for 30 days 
it will be equal to see flow rate they have given in terms of meter cube per minute so we have to first convert it in terms of meter cube per day so 35 into 24 hour 60 minute 60 second sorry not second this will be only minute okay so first of all we have calculated in terms of meter cube per day okay so now up till here it has come in terms of meter cube per day now it is in terms of per day so total number of days is 30 days it is given in the question so if so basically this is the total number of days and lm dosage is 25 milligram per liter but in answer they are asking in terms of kg so we will multiply it with the 25 into 10 show power minus 6 so milligram is converted into kg so the value we will get as 37,800 kg okay so i hope this is clear anyone has any doubt is it clear Am I audible? Yes, I clear. Okay. So, we will proceed to the next question. So, the next question says, A wastewater stream flow is 2 meter cube per second. Ultimate BOD is 90 milligram per liter is joining a small river. Both water streams get mixed up instantaneously. Cross-sectional area of the river is 50 meters square. Assuming the deoxygenation rate constant, K dash, is equal to 0 0.25 per day. The BOD of river water is 10 km downstream of the mixing point F. So first of all in this question we will write the given data QS is equal to 2 meter cube per second ok BOD ultimate of wastewater stream is 90 milligram per liter so BOD of river is BOD of ultimate BOD of river is 5 milligram per liter and flow rate of river is 12 meter cube per second. So from this we will first calculate the ultimate BOD mix. So BOD ultimate of mix. So since two, one wastewater stream and one joining a small river. So basically BOD ultimate of that mixing point we will calculate as BOD ultimate of wastewater stream into flow of wastewater stream plus BOD ultimate of river into Q river into wastewater stream multi, uh, plus Q addition of flow rate ok so now BOD of the ultimate wastewater is 90 flow rate of the stream is 2 plus BOD ultimate of the river is 12 meter cube BOD sorry BOD ultimate is 5 and flow rate is 12 so basically 5 into 12 divided by 2 plus 12. So we will get a 240 by 12, uh, 240 by 14. So if we write, we can write 120 by 7 milligram per liter. Okay. So this is the BOD ultimate mix. So BOD ultimate mix. Now knowing the BOD ultimate mix, so in the next we will calculate the flow velocity. So which so velocity of river flow. So velocity of river flow is basically Q by A because we know Q is equal to A V. Using that we, uh, Q is equal to Q by A. Okay. Now 
q will be since two so q will be basically 2 plus 12 because two, so because both the waters so basically this is the river and here is the so this waste water stream is joining the river so here the flow rate will be 2 plus 12 and area of cross section is given in the question so cross section area of the river is 50 meter square so here it is 50 okay so it will come out to be 0.28 meter per second so velocity of river flow now once we know the velocity of river flow we will calculate the time so for 10 km down show the mixing point that what is the time taken to cover 10 km so time taken to cover 10 km distance so time taken to cover distance will be so distance by speed distance by velocity basically normal distance is equal to speed into time so you from that time is equal to distance by velocity so distance is 10 km so 10 into 1000 meter and it is velocity 0.28 so we got value as 3 5 Seven one four point two eight. So this will be in terms of second because here it is in meter and here it is in meter per second. So the time taken to cover will come in unit will be second three five seven one four point two eight seconds. So now so basically time taken value came out to be in terms of three five. Seven one four point two eight five seven second. So to convert in terms of day, we will get as zero point four one three three six days. Okay. Till now it is clear. So from now here we will calculate the BOD at time t L naught organic matter time t L naught is equal to L naught L t is equal to L naught e raised to power minus k t. So the L naught value is 120 by 7, which we calculated this one BOD ultimate at mix into E. K value they have given as 0.25 in the question. Here it is minus 0.25 and time in days it is we have just now calculated 0.4136. So LT will come out to be 15.46 milligram. Per liter. Now we have to calculate the BOD. So now BOD at 10 kilometer downstream. It will be L naught minus L T. L naught came out to be 120 by 7, and L T just now we calculated. It is 15.46. so the answer will come out 1.68 mg per liter so answer option a is correct is this question is clear any even have any doubt so basically i will again summarize this question so in this question they are saying one is waste water stream and it is joining a small river okay so both the water gets mixed up instantaneously the cross section area of river they have mentioned so they are asking what will be the bod of the river water at the 10 km of the downstream of the mixing point so suppose it is a river so this is a waste water is coming here is the river water so from here what will be the 10 km distance at the downstream what will be the bod here okay so a waste water both stream so now what we did we first calculated the bod mix that is bod ultimate at the mixing point 
using the values given in the question flow rate is given bod of the waste stream is given and the river small river flow and ultimate bod is given using that we calculated the bod mix once we calculated this bod mix we calculated the so series wise is the first thing we calculated second thing we calculated the velocity of the flow so here by calculating the velocity of flow we considered the flow of the river as well as the waste stream that is by 2 plus 2l divided by 50 is a cross section area so now this is the second thing we calculated then we calculated the third thing which is the time taken to cover the 10 km distance as we know distance time taken is equals to distance by velocity we use the velocity which we calculated here to calculate the time taken now we got the value in terms of second we converted in terms of days then we calculated the lt after calculating the lt we added uh, derive calculate the value of bod at 10 km downstream that is l not minus lt 120 by 7 minus 15.46 gives the bod as 1.68 mg per liter okay now this is get 2022 question and it came in set 2 so basically in this question they are asking in a solid waste handling facility moisture content of food waste paper waste and glass waste were found to be mcf mcp and mcg respectively so basically they are denoting this food paper waste glass and moisture content in these terms mcf mcp and mcg similarly the energy content of plastic waste food waste and glass waste were found to be ecpp ecf and ecg okay so which one of the following statement is correct so in this first what we have to do i will tell you the characteristics then we will solve this so basically components and moisture percentage okay so first is food waste food waste moisture percentage 70% it is better you just know these values second paper 6% third is plastic Two percent. Fourth is rubber. Fifth is wood. Sixth is glass. So rubber percentage is two percent. Wood is twenty. And glass is two percent. Okay. So basically, food waste moisture content is seventy. Paper is six. plastic is 2 rubber is 2 wood is 20 and glass is 2% so now knowing the moisture content we can now first of all we can see which is the correct option so based on the moisture content so if you look the food waste is higher food waste is higher okay followed by paper so in the question they are talking about the paper waste also followed by paper waste then glass okay so so this sequence is in if it talks in terms of moisture content so looking at that option a is correct for moisture content okay now for energy content we have to look at values of the energy so similarly for energy content so the component okay so for food waste paper plastic and glass so for food waste it is near to 45 4652 for paper it is 16747 for plastic it is 32564 and it is for glass is 139 kg per kilojoule okay now 
in this if you look at plastic waste has higher so plastic waste has higher then paper then food waste okay so now so looking at that trend so option b is correct okay so plastic waste has higher then food waste okay so if you look at food waste okay plastic waste is higher then it is glass so plastic waste is higher then food waste and then glass so if you see the trend option a and option b are correct answers okay i hope this is clear is it clear yes sir clear okay so i will suggest you to at least remember these values it will be helpful for you now the last question the last question says a 100 mg of hno3 nitric acid strong acid is added to water bringing the final volume to 1 liter consider the atomic weight of hydrogen nitrogen and oxygen as 1 g per mole 14 g per mole and 16 g per mole respectively the final ph of this water is ignore the dissociation of water okay so in this they are they want to uh, the question asks about the final ph so we know when hno3 in water splits into h plus ion plus no3 minus okay so now you can see one mole of hno3 produces one mole of hno plus ion so from the equation we can infer one mole of hno3 produces one mole of h plus ion okay looking at the mass balance one mole one mole okay the second thing is if we know the total mole of hno3 that means that much mole of h plus ion has been produced so we will calculate the mole of hno3 mole of hno3 is equals to given weight given weight is 100 mg so we will convert in terms of gram and by molecular weight molecular weight one 14 plus 48 so this is mole so we will get 1.587 into 10 to the minus 3 mole okay so now this much mole of hno3 so in base uh, from the equation chemical reaction we can see one mole of hno3 produces one mole of h plus so obviously this much mole of hno3 will produce this much mole of h, h plus ion okay so therefore if we have to calculate the ph ph is equals to minus log of h plus ion so basically this is the this much mole if one mole produces one mole of h plus ion so this much mole of hno3 will produce this much mole of h h plus ion so log 1.587 tends to minus 3 okay so the value will come out to be 2.8 so the basically the ph will be 2.8 so in this question option a is correct answer so is this is, is this question is clear anyone has any doubt till now so i will again explain this so in this question they are asking a 100 mg of hno3 added to water bringing the final volume to 1 liter so final ph they are asking so basically from the equation we can see hno3 once split produces h plus ion and no3 minus ion so hno3 so since it is one mole of hno3 produces one mole of h plus ion so knowing the total mole of hno3 will produce this much mole of h plus ion so that's why we did ph is equals to minus log of h plus ion minus log 1.587 to 10 minus 3 and we got ph is equals to 2.8 Okay. Yes, Binoy. Sir, uh, in the previous question, how hmm. do we decide that uh, it is BOD uh, remaining is asked or BOD that has been consumed? So when nothing has been mentioned, so in this question, right, ten kilometer downstream. Yes, so sir. see, in this they have not mentioned specifically BOD. Consume or 
BOD remaining, right? So whenever there is no such thing they have mentioned, we will follow this method only. In question, in few version of gate, they will specifically mention, okay? Okay, sir. Anyone else have anything to ask? So this is for today's class. If anyone have anything to ask till now, you can ask. I will be here till four o'clock. Also, if anyone wants that uh, other topic which I can discuss in the next class, you can also suggest. So if none of you has any doubt, I will request you to please leave the class. Yeah, welcome.